Okay, so recently we've had a lot of computers come through with the Rockchip RK3588 or 3588S processors, and uh, they're all really good, really powerful. But one annoying thing about them is that you can't take an image from a Mechatronics RK3588 and run it on any of these other devices. Well, there is a way around it. Uh, it's not the perfect solution, but it's great for being able to mess around. But before I show the method, so this is a R58 Mini from Mechatronics with an RK3588. This is the Cadus Edge 2 Pro, uh, which is an RK3588S. The Orange Pi 5, which is an RK3588S. And also the FiDTab Duo, which is also using the 3588S. But if you took an image made for the FiDTab, it won't boot in any other device. Um, but with this adaption, it can be done, and so it gives us certainly a few more options. So thanks to Iteung on YouTube for sending me this comment. This link is how to install Reborn OS at Orange Pi 5. And I've also been contacted by the dev from Reborn OS, uh, who said, if you join the official Discord server, you can find a testing image for the Rock 5B and soon the Orange Pi 5. Also, you should have done an online install and picked a desktop. Uh, so I did a video on Reborn OS for the Raspberry Pi 4, and I've already done it differently for the Orange Pi 5, and I installed KDE Plasma, which worked terribly. But this is the Rock 5B image, so it's not expected to work. But actually, I've installed GNOME, and it works really well. So if I launch Firefox, if I launch uh, Terminal, Files, we can go into other apps, and you can see that uh, it does, it works really nicely, it's nice and fast, uh, it doesn't seem to crash, um, whereas the KDE Plasma version really was terrible uh, and would crash all the time. And you can see this is the SD card I'm using, and it also shows me and gives me access to all the uh, various different partitions of Chromium OS or FIDE OS. I'm going to use the information in this video, but I'm going to try and do it within Linux because uh, the version it gives you shows you how to do it with a Windows device. And I'm wondering if I can do the same sort of thing within Linux. So let's have a look at the description here and let's download that image. So you can see here there's an image that we can download for the Rock 5B. So let's click on that and come back when that's done. Now it's downloaded a compressed image. Uh, if we press the Windows key and go to Files and Downloads, you'll see that it's in here. It would give me the option of uh, uncompressing it if I want to, but uh, I'm hoping I can use Raspberry Pi Imager. Now let's try the Add Remove software and see if it will do that on its own. Imager doesn't show up everywhere. So search here for Imager. No, it doesn't look like it. Right, so let's try installing it with Terminal. Now, I'm so used to, we'll just control alt t work on this, no. Uh, I'm so used to Debian that I always use sudo apt. It's different on Arch-based operating systems. I just will run the effects just to show you what's going on. So let's try sudo pacman-srpi-imager. Okay, so I've got the snap store on here as well. Let's try imager on here. Ah, oh, here we go. Uh, here we are. So I'm on Arch Linux. Let's try this one. I don't know if I need to put anything else on there first of all. Let's try that first. Oh, it looks like it's going to work. There is one new warning, see snap warnings. Oh, well, I'll leave that because I just want to install this software. So let's see if Imager comes up now. Yes, perfect. Let's click on that and just snap it to one side. Choose OS, use custom. So Rock 5B image and open. To storage, well I haven't got anything in there yet. I've got the NVMe drive, but this, I don't know if it'll work on the NVMe drive or not. I'm gonna use an SD card just to be super safe. So let's pop an SD card into an SD card reader. And pop that in. Okay, so let's install it to the drive that I've just plugged in and hit right and yes, and come back when that's all done.
Okay, that's just finishing now, finalizing. Yeah, that's done. So let's close down Imager. Now I want to access that partition, so I'm going to go to Disks and launch that. And this is cool because it tells us what everything is. So you can see I've got my NVMe drive, I've got my SD card reader, which is what's running the operating system. And then I've got this one, which shows me uh, all the partitions on the newly written one. You can see this isn't expanded yet. So I'm going to hit boot and hopefully it will let me mount that. 134 megabytes. So we click on this. Pretty sure this is what we need. Uh, so back to the YouTube video, we need to download a little file. Copy the DTB file for Orange Pi 5 into the mounted boot label. So I'm gonna download that. And that's the file. So we need to show the location of it. Let's show in folder. And let's copy that. And let's open up, what does it say? The DTB folder, I think it said. Yeah, DTBS rock chip folder. DTBS rock chip. And let's just paste that in. There we go. And then we need to edit a file. So on the left hand side, you can see it says edit ext linux dot conf in h ext linux so if we go back ext linux and here is the file we need to edit and we're going to copy this bit in without the speech marks oh let's try it the other way And we need to put that, it actually has it in the video just to be sure. Yeah, here. So this, this is what it should look like. So let's snap that over. I do like the window snapping. So I'm hashing out this one. So when you put a hash in, it basically ignores that line. And then we can put the line that we've just copied in here, so then it's looking for the Orange Pi 5. And I'm gonna save that. And close all that down. Close all of this down. Uh, in fact, I can shut down and hopefully reboot. So let's close it all down. Shut down. So power off and power off. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch off I'm going to take out the SD card that was running Reborn OS. I'm going to use the newly written SD card and pop that in there. And also remove the NVMe drive, which I don't secure in at the moment because I'm testing. And hopefully when I reboot, this will reboot into Reborn OS, which is the Rock 5B image that we've converted to work with the Orange Pi 5. We have a blue light. Oh, it's looking good. Yeah, and we're in. Perfect. And this is the bit that I did differently in my Raspberry Pi video. So uh, what I should have done was do install online. It was so different to other things that I'd used that I just went with the offline one and uh, just wanted to get the clock and everything up and running. So let's have a look and see what it does. So we can pick our languages location, keyboard. Now I've done KDE Plasma and it didn't work very well. It wants to default to Budgie. I did GNOME in the previous one. Let's stick with Budgie and see what it does. So go next. On the Ranexa forums for the Rock 5B, they've uh, said that they've had Wayland working, trying to get GPU support, and it was under backend system display Wayland. Backend system. Display Wayland. Yeah, and it lets me tick it. Okay, that could be good. Let's leave everything else for now, but there's loads and loads of options in there. Pop your details in and create a password. Hit next and set up now. This takes a little while. Although it's going to be a lot quicker than the Pi 4, it looks like. 
Okay, so that says it's finished. So restart system comes up as an option. So let's restart that. And by the way, the DTB file, uh, it says from Google, is a device tree blob file used by the Linux kernel. It contains binary data that describes a computer's hardware. DTB files allow operating systems to manage a computer's components by telling the operating system what hardware the computer includes. So because these 3588 and 3588S boards have very similar architecture in them, then some of it may be interchangeable. I wouldn't necessarily advise writing it onto an EMMC drive uh, because I almost came unstuck on the FiTab Duo having the only storage being internal. Uh, I flashed an operating system not designed for it and uh, yeah, nearly bricked it or felt like I nearly bricked it, but I did get out of it. But if you're using removable storage, there shouldn't be much to worry about and we can just play around with it. So I'm running GL Mark II, uh, you can see on the left hand side here, and it says about OpenGL, GL version 3.0, MESA 23.0.0, and it seems to be going through all these tests and looking very, very smooth on the left hand side. Seems to be coping well with all these transparency layers. Yeah, things like this look really nice and smooth as well. No, not struggling with that at all. Oh, that looks great. Okay, so it's finished with a score of 1,096. I did try Wayland, but uh, when you select GNOME on Wayland, it doesn't actually start up, and I guess that's because the GNOME desktop isn't in there. So let's go back to Budgie, and I'll just quickly show video playback because that was pretty impressive. So how are we looking? 31 frames drop. Doesn't seem to be dropping anymore. Uh, you can see it says 1080. Uh, it's jumped up to, to 4K as the current resolution, but it is displaying at 1080 but normally that's enough to, to trip up a system if it's not performing well. So yeah, really happy with that. Okay, so what this basically means is that uh, we may have more options for every single board computer running a 3588 or a 3588S. Uh, it certainly means that if a new, say, recall box comes out on one of the systems, we can maybe download that, we can adapt it for whatever board we want to use it for. And uh, yeah, I'm sure that can only be a good thing. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.